wrap up the week around the Bay and wrap up the preseason. The Spurs are in town with a tall kid we got to talk about. Final game of the preseason, and then the Warriors get ready to do it for real. Hello, everybody. Bob Fitzgerald alongside Kalen Azabuki. And final game of the preseason, partner. Are you ready for this and when Binyana? And you're ready for the season next week? Of course. And the Warriors treat last game like a dress rehearsal. They did. You might get yep. two dress rehearsals here. You can tell they want to get off to a great start on the road, of course, and at home. You've got to get the good habits to carry over for sure. Well, the preseason, the Warriors have won games. You don't really care about the one loss record, but there's definitely been some storylines. Our four plays of the day. First, Steph and Chris Paul. Your thoughts? Steph is like, well, follow my lead. I got us. Chris Paul already looks really comfortable, and it's really no surprise. His IQ is through the roof. Seems like he's got all the plays down. The execution is brilliant. Finding Steph, all the screening happening. He's got it under control. Kaminga Moody getting opportunity and absolutely delivering and developing. I think that's what we wanted to see in this preseason. Coach Kerr wanted to see that this preseason. He looks confident. Looks like he's ready for more touches, more post touches, more ISOs. And Moses Moody, he's not hesitating. He's making quick decisions. How about young guys looking real comfortable in Brandon Pojemski and Trace Jackson Davis? Listen, I'm not surprised by this either. These are confident guys. We spent a lot of time talking to Brandon. He looks like he's ready to come out and, and play his role, get penetration, get rebounds. And Trace Jackson Davis, he knows his way around the rim. He yeah, knows how to sure. finish, and the guys are using him well. All right, so when we saw the preseason schedule, we wanted to see one guy. They're going to talk about him all throughout the NBA, part of our Rackinson rollout. 7-3 with an 8-foot wingspan from France, Victor Wembignana. Our first look at him at Chase Center. We will break down some tall timber in San Antonio coming up next. Brought to you by Toyota. Class leading MPG and more hybrid models than any other brand. Toyota, let's go places. We already know that the Warriors are must-see TV, not only around the Bay, but around the league. But everyone is buzzing about Victor Wembignana. I am excited just to see him in person for the first time. This guy's built different. It is shocking what he can do at his size, which is everything. Pull up threes, step backs, the handle, he moves amazing, he can run the floor. But honestly, he may win defensive player of the year before he gets recognized for anything offensively. Like this guy, you think you're by him on offense? He's blocking your shot easily. Like that eight foot wingspan is so uncommon. So going up against him and trying to score on him might be the hardest part. Well, play professionally in France. He can take it all the way out to the three-point line. I don't know if I've ever seen a 7-3, 7-4 guy move this way. Exactly, the movement. But the fact that he's with Coach Popovich is best for him. He's going to learn so much under his tutelage. Perfect spot. He said, listen, if I could have my choice who was going to have the number one pick, I would have picked San Antonio. We have fun in the preseason, and we've saved the best for last year. We're going to bring in an old friend, JTA, Juan Toscano Anderson. This guy played so hard all the time, he made Coletta look like a slacker. He's going to join us on the broadcast throughout the night. Oakland's own is coming at you. We'll tip it off from Chase Center. The starting lineups are on the way. Beautiful day around the Bay as we wrap up the preseason with the Spurs in town. And we thought we would have fun on the final preseason telecast and bring in Oakland's own Juan Toscano Anderson is going to hang with me and Kalina throughout the broadcast. And just before we get in depth into your career and what you're doing and becoming a new dad. Yes. Thank if you need a reminder about what it looks like to play hard in the NBA. Let's typify JTA, regular season game, ball heading out of bounds, and you basically nearly gave up your life to get an assist to step for a three. Playing hard every minute of every game is not easy. No, it's not easy. It's definitely a skill. Uh, I think it's a skill that's being lost in today's game. But, uh, you know, it's something that I have, and it's something that got me into the league. So uh, I like to hang my hat on that skill every day. Man, that's the definition of giving your body up for the team. And everybody obviously appreciated it there, but that's a way of life for you. That's for just sure. the way you play. You didn't know anything different. No, I don't. I mean, you got to get the job done one way or another. And I see a loose ball. And, I mean, when you know the NBA, you know how small the margins are in this game. And so every loose ball matters. And that one mattered just as much as any other one. And I just went to go get it. That's why he's a crowd favorite. That's <laughs> why they love him. One of the cool things is, and Colette and I are calling your games, and it's okay. Juan Toscano Anderson. And I, you know, we went and saw you in Santa Cruz. You come up to the dubs. You win a championship in your hometown. 
But we started calling you JTA all the time. But not a lot of people have done that in your life. Like that JTA was like your NBA moniker, and then that's just taken off since then. Yeah, I mean, I get. I think you you might have gave me that nickname, and it's now it's just stuck, and it's become uh, more or less household nickname in the Bay Area. So uh, I'm gonna let it rock out. I actually named my son JTA as well. Well, Perfect. tell us about your son. September 28th, he became a dad. Yeah. Say his name too. I want to hear the name. The coolest name. That's incredible. <laughs> that is incredible. NBA fans around the world should appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I got. Uh, I was blessed with the son, Jada Santino Toscano Anderson, uh, September 28th, uh, 10, 12 p.m., 10 pound, one ounce baby, big boy. So nice. you know, hopefully you guys see him in the league in about 18, 19 years. So our Audi starting lineups, it's Keldon Johnson, Victor Wembanyama, Zach Collins, Devin Vassell, and Jeremy Sohan for San Antonio. For the Dubs, Steph and Chris Paul again in the starting lineup with Clay Thompson, Kevon Looney, and Andrew Wiggins. You saw Wembanyama's passing ability right off the bat. JTA, how excited are you to watch this guy play? I mean, this is generational talent. This kid can do everything. 7-5. I was watching him play against the OKC Thunder the other night. He had one play that really impressed me. Jab step, um, you know, dribble between the legs, change of direction. And to watch a guy at 7-5 move like that is incredible. So I hope, you know, again, NBA fans around the world should really be appreciating what they have in store for them. What do you think about Chris Paul and Steph playing in a backcourt? Steph's had to guard like he's got Vassell now, but... It, you've got two amazing ball handlers and two great shooters. Yes, for sure. I mean, a lot of people are concerned with the rebounding part or defending, but I think that's more of an effort thing. And I think, uh, you know, Steph being off the ball allows him to be a little bit more dynamic, you know. So uh, I think it's great. You know, get easier shots. Chris Paul can get Clay some shots. Clay comes out guns blazing. I love it. Preseason's been fun. Steph came out midseason form, hit a game winner to win the game. So uh, I'm excited about it. I, I love to see it. And Vassell, that backdoor cut, he got super paid this summer. He deserves it, he too. Did. Clay Thompson for the baseline off fire. There's Looney doing the dirty work. And he said worried about rebounding. I don't worry about rebounding when Kavon's in there. You got the best rebounder in the league on your team. I mean, he could cover a lot of gaps, just as, you know, Steph covers a lot of gaps on the scoring end, and Draymond does the same defensively. I think what makes him so good as a rebounder is his IQ rebound. Like, he knows where it's coming off. You see Webb and with all the tools he has. Tough shot over Wiggs, though. Wiggs is a 6'8 six, six, long. Defender, tough like defender. A, he's not small. No, he's not. And he's athletic, you know, got the limbs, so that's a tough shot. Wembignano went to double team Looney and he backed it out. So Wiggins, all right, Wembignano hit a jumper. Andrew answers said, I'm going to ask you guys both this during the game. How would you guard Wembignano? Because he's not a center, he's a wing right now. Look at the back door cut. I don't know, Kareem, I'm going to let you answer that one first. <laughs> <laughs> Vassell <laughs> hitting from the corner. What would you do, Kay? Honestly, it depends on where he is on the floor. If he's trying to post you up, you just try to get into him and use the strength you may have against him. Like, if we're lower to the ground, our base is a little stronger, so you just try to push him out as Clay Thompson draws a foul, get to the rim. Get to the get to the free throw line, but if he's on the perimeter, I'm honestly gonna gap him just a little bit, right? And just try to move my feet. He shouldn't have the quickness advantage, and this is such a tough matchup for Andrew Wiggins. You're, you're trying to contest as good as you can, but at his size, he's not gonna see that contest. Now, JTA, take us into the real real here. He's a little light. Mm -hmm. would, would, would you? I mean, would there be some elbows? Would there be some physicality? Would you try to make him feel uncomfortable? What, what would you do with a, a long, lean guy like that? Yeah, I mean, you try to win that battle that way. I mean, you see the shot he just shot over Wiggs. Once he, he has a space and he can see the rim, I mean, he's shooting over everybody. So you just got to try to win that battle defensively, um, you know, being aggressive. You were telling me before we came on the air that he seems pretty comfortable, like the bright lights and the spotlight. He's kind of looking forward to it. Yeah, I think he's built for it. I mean, his at it. We all know, you know, the game is physical, but it's 80% mental. And, you know, just hearing him talk in interviews, his attitude, his, you know, preparation, getting into the league, I think he's more than ready, you know, to be a star in this league. Keldon Johnson scoring there. Vassell Keldon Johnson will be the main guys for San Antonio. And then when Benyana. Okay, you said at top of the telecast, being with Greg Popovich, they already had with Tony Parker and Boris Diaw kind of a French connection, but you've got the all-time winningest coach to coach this maybe all-time generational prospect. I think it's great. And I think that's why Wembenyana was so excited about coming to the Spurs. The winning tradition they have, all the teaching, they're so hands-on with their player development. So he's going to develop. And 
Coach Popovich is going to make sure he doesn't get too out of pocket. He's got so many tools. It's almost like a singer. As Clay Thompson hits a three. It's almost like a singer that can do a lot of runs. If they do it all the time, it doesn't sound right. Mm -hmm. So you got to have a balance when you deploy all the tools you have, and that's what Coach Popovich is going to do for him, JT. So there was the post up. You guys talked about it. Andrew Wiggins, a lot more physical on Wembenyana, forced him into a difficult shot. And then that ball kicked that remained more your ball. I honestly think San Antonio was the perfect place for him. You know, I mean, we talked about the coaching. They have culture. Look at the vets that he'll be able to learn from. And then if you've ever been to San Antonio, you know, there's not a lot going on there. So they're <laughs> the San No, not to be funny, but no, the San true. Antonio Spurs are their baby. Yeah. You know, the community is going to embrace him. They're going to love him. They're going to take care of him. So I think, you know, all cylinders will click on that end for them. I'm sure the Warriors mentality that Andrew you got to make him work a little bit on this defensive side See if you can get by him Get him involved in the action now. They're playing Jeremy Sohan as the point guard and it's 6-8 They get it to Zach Collins there from Vassell Wembenyana unusual size Sohan 6-8 unusual size the Spurs team you can kind of see it formulating a little bit They're gonna be a problem. Yeah, I mean they're young. They have a lot of talent Look at all these guys except with the exception of Zach Collins I think all of these guys are you know what third fourth maybe fifth year in the league uh, They're all young and talented and have a lot of you know a lot of experience already So and we were already tired of the Spurs with 20 plus years of playoffs in a row They finally <laughs> dip down and get Wembenyana, but have Vassell and have Keldon Johnson they are rebuilding right in front of our eyes. Yeah, I think it's a mentality shift. Last year, as you see, I've been yelling, like eight foot wingspan. He blocked that three. How do you shoot over there? Well, you can't. Probably show and go there if you're Andrew Wiggins. You see him closing out to you like that. And then Mignotta from three. He's four feet behind the line. See, he's, he's not Steph Curry at 7 3 yet. He's only shot 27% with the Mets 92 last season. But Chris Paul gets him on a switch. Uh, and so that's the turnover issue. Turnovers. Juan, you know the Warriors, when they're at their best, that, you know, this is, we got to watch Wembenyana's block. But the turnovers, what's that from a player's mindset of the coach saying, hey, we can't turn it over? Is it the ball in tight spaces? Is it sloppiness? I mean, what, what do the turnover numbers come from? You know what? I mean, I, I think it's, it's just guys trying to make plays on this team. I mean, None of these guys are out here doing knuckleheaded things, you know, and that's the thing about the Warriors. That's why they're so hard to guard because of this organized chaos. And that's where Steph and Clay get a lot of their shots from, and that's where they get going and get hot, you know. So sometimes you have to live with those turnovers. Obviously, uh, going back to, you know, when I spoke about the margins in the NBA, um, you try to limit those turnovers because the game could come, could come down to one or two possessions. Um, but you got kind of got to live with them when you, when you have, I mean, see, that's... Uh, if that was a turnover, that would have been a bad turnover by Steph. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Steph, help me out here. <laughs> but, you know, they're out, here, out there trying to make big, big plays, and that's what big-time players do. They make big plays. All right, Steve Kerr's going to use the timeout. 7.24 remaining in the first. Juan Toscano-Anderson hanging out with us during the game tonight. And this is a little NBA preseason history. Steph and Wembenyana. <laughs> Steph went up. He tried. And Wembenyana went four floors higher. <laughs> I need that picture there. That's history. Our BMW Ultimate Performer from Kalena and Juan and me. Thumbs up to our man Andre Iguodala, retired from the NBA this morning. He typified the championship Warriors because he agreed to come off the bench, allow Harrison Barnes to start. After reviewing the play, the at-bounds call has been overturned. It will be San Antonio's call. As a result, San Antonio will reserve the right to challenge a play later on game. We were all been around him a lot. Give me an Iguodala thought. Oh, man, that's an incredible career. Look at that. I mean, you know, I, I think Andre career, Andre Iguodala's career is like an iceberg. People only see the tip of the iceberg and like the war his time with the Warriors is like the tip of the iceberg but people forget wow. about what he did in Philadelphia he was buckets in Philadelphia yes. all-star you for know sure what he did in Denver so I mean what he's done for this game what he's doing for you know players off the court and uh, you know the empowerment of like you know doing stuff within tech investing and all that stuff shout out to Andre Iguodala man one of my vets that's a Hall of Fame career but you're right about Philly though he had to take over after AI left that's like big shoes to fill and he did a great job. Swiss Army Knife, he changed that series in 2015. People forget how good he was. He deserved that finals MVP. And for 19 years, I never called him Iggy. Ever. 
I don't think yeah. he liked okay. that. Yeah. I don't think he liked that. So I was respected. I never did either. Yeah. I mean that's. Uh, but Andre Iguodala on the golf course, making you laugh, making you think, watching him play. I, I mean, that's that's just one of my guys right there. He's so. got a pretty good podcast going. He does. He does. He and Evan Turner do a great job. So Zach Collins with Wem Benyatta. We talked about kind of the size that San Antonio's going with. Wem Benyatta's got the greenest of green lights. They're running some good plays for him. He's got some good looks trying to put him in positions to score. So Corey Joseph is in with the starters here. And so Steve Kerr getting a look at some different combos. Corey had a lower back injury for most of the preseason, played the other night and now playing tonight. He won a championship with the Spurs. Shot clock at three. Clay sheds so hard, and Clay Thompson's got nine already in the first five minutes of the game. And Warriors are just trying to attack all these switches. Juan, you were really good at switching. Just talk about the importance of being that versatile as one Bagana. His versatility on both ends of the floor is showing out right now. But just the importance of being able to switch on the guards and being able to pick up all the different schemes you're trying to do defensively. I mean, you know, you blow up the other team's offensive plan. You yeah. inhibit them from getting into motions and stuff. So, I mean, you can switch everything. Yeah. It's, it's hard to score on. And you keep, you keep the, it's like, there's like a buffer between the ball and the wow. Come on, man. So, Lemignana is at two jumpers. That time flips it in and draws the foul. And, again, people are going to see 7-3, seven, 7-4. Seven, they think, oh, well, he's a center. Mm -hmm. he, he really is a wing. He's a basketball player. Bob. Yeah. There, no, that's, <laughs> that's you what just said is. it better. Yeah. It's perfect. He can do it he all. Positionless. It all. And he's got touch, though. Like, it's so uncanny and crazy that he has that touch at his size, the way he moves. Like, Clay switched on to him, and Clay was afterwards shaking his head and just smiling like this dude. Is different, but imagine this. He just got to the NBA, and Kalina, you know how much more you learn when you're in the NBA than you could have ever learned before. So, I mean, especially like we talked about the coaching from Pop, and you know the vets he's going to learn from. I mean, yeah, he's going to get so much better. I think his time playing in summer league. Block. He blocked Clay Thompson. He, he just blocked his second three of the night, and then look, he's hammered that. Is he just toying with people right now? Well, you can see it's it's a little surprising his length. Warriors are kind of getting used to it. And that lobbed to Wiggins, but Corey Joseph, look what I found. I'm going to ask you both this. Do you think that Jonathan Kaminga is young? Yeah. He's 21. Wembenyana's 19. He's two years younger than Kaminga. Yeah. Come he's, on. He's going to grow up in the NBA. Pretty much. Yeah. So Corey Joseph, along with Saric, two of the free agent acquisitions. We're going to talk to Mike Dunleavy in the second quarter about the Warrior offseason building his team. Wembenyana's got three blocks already. Andrew Wiggins threw everything he could at Wembenyana. Couldn't shake him. And then he lasers the three. He's, he's, oh, oh, man. He's dominating right now. I mean, I know it's extremely early to talk about this, but if he averages four blocks a game, does he get defensive player of the year? Right, that's what I said. On the defensive side, like, you can't figure out his length. Wiggins, the open shot. Wembenyana's already got 12 points on five of eight shooting, and then he runs the floor, and they tops he got just enough of a body on him. And Clay off back iron. Now you can run big guys and wear them out as Steph rattles in the three. Oh, they're just so excited to shoat the ball before Wembenyana got down there. <laughs> Wembenyana's oh got, he's got his hands on his hips already. I think in terms of a conditioning thing, he's like, oh, warrior speed might be different. He actually said that. They asked him, like, what's the one thing you want to work on? He's like, I get tired a little too quickly. So he probably needs to work out with Steph. Steph is in the best shape ever out of anyone in the league. But Wembenyana right now. You're seeing what all the hype is about. He is a real deal. Spurs lead by seven with four and a half remaining in the first. That's some interesting bobbleheads at the Steph Curry graduation bobblehead. Now the paper plane Clay Thompson bobblehead. And if you're not around all the press conferences, you don't realize that Clay makes paper airplanes. And that's usually the box score that he's taking a look at. And then he actually got Steph into it in some of the playoff ones. Oh, that was a good one. How's your paper airplane game, JTA? I don't know. I've probably been about 25 years since I've made one. It was safe. <laughs> Might have to try that out tonight, though. Well, Victor Wembenyama has been absolutely amazing, and he does get his first rest as Jetty Osman and Malachi Branham and Trey Jones check in for San Antonio. He earned that rest. 
Rodney Magruder's first playing time. He had had a concussion in training camp, along with Jonathan Kaminga. They're giving him a lot to think about defensively. Just that little ball screen, close quarters, starting on the free throw line there. Warriors switched it, but Collins showing some versatility to pivot game. He's underrated, man. I like his game a lot. Plays hard, can shoot it a little bit. That pass knocked away by Sohan. Uh, Jeremy Sohan, is he going to play the point guard? Setting up Jones. San Antonio. They've always had the great ball movement. Branham able to cash that in and get a 30 spot just inside of four minutes remaining in the first quarter. Uh, Wembenyama definitely led the way, but San Antonio playing very solid as Dario Saric. What do you think about a stretch five big along with Looney, along with Trey Jackson Davis? They got some bodies for the Dubs now. I really like this pickup for the Dubs. I mean, you know, Dario Saric can do so many things on the floor. He can put it on the floor, can shoot the ball, can finish around the rim, and he's physical as well. I mean, I know that from watching him and playing against him, so I think that'll bring another dynamic, you know, to the Warriors as well. That's the big thing. He's putting it on the floor. He's keeping defenders honest. Everybody expects him to just shoot the three, pick and pop, but listen, he's got more to his game, he's saying. So Steve Kerr going to use another timeout here with 328 remaining in the first. To talk about an amazing player, Lisa, Lisa Le Leslie, Go. Le legend, absolutely incredible. What do you think about uh, the Bay getting a WNBA team, JTA? I, I mean, that's nice. I think that's incredible. Um, I think Joe Lacob and the team are going to change the WNBA just from being on the Warriors team and knowing how they approach, you know, taking care of their players, their players' families. Um, just everything around the team. Uh, I think he's going to raise the bar and not that the bar isn't already high in the WNBA. I don't want that to come off the wrong way, but I think Joe Lacob is going to enhance what the WNBA is about. Sohan is still shooting one handed. Man. Yep. Uh, he was doing this last year, just experimenting because he was struggling with his free throw shoot percentage. That's boldness to be able to do that. If it works, it works. I know, right? <laughs> Give us a thought. Being from Oakland and playing for the Warriors and winning a championship, wearing 95 for 95th Ave. Yeah. I, I mean, I just think if you're writing a Hollywood script that doesn't come about, <laughs> you lived it. What was that like? Uh, it was pretty cool. I mean, uh, it wasn't pretty cool. I think that's uh, dismissive to how incredible the experience was. So let me retract that statement. It was incredible. It was the time of my life. Um, just making it to the NBA, being here with you know, my family. My mom was able to come to many games, um, you know, a lot of my family. And this is a team that I've watched, you know, growing up. I watched Kalina when I was a kid. I've listened to you my whole life. Um, I was upset when, you know, the Warriors traded Monte Ellis and kept Steph Curry. But Kaminga <laughs> all the way to the baseline. You know, so, I mean, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was a dream come true, and I wouldn't have traded that experience for anything else in the world other than my son. So Talk about the G League part of your journey, because I, I played the D League. When, when I was coming up, it was called the D League, the G League now. It's a great league, really competitive. Right. And obviously the Warriors were looking at you down there going, this guy's got great IQ. His motor is just relentless. And they lucked you from there and you were able to get up from there. Let's just talk about that experience as GP2 knocked down a three. The, the experience was a lot of fun. It was one of the funner times I've had, you know, in my basketball journey. Uh, I was around a, a bunch of great guys, uh, coached by Aaron Miles, who's still a, a, I wouldn't even consider him a friend. I would consider him family. Uh, the whole coaching staff down there, Coach Weems and uh, Anthony Vereen, who are on the staff now, um, Mike Lee, amongst many other guys. Uh, it, it was a great time. Um, I had a lot of fun, and, you know, I got a lot better. So That's the key. You had the right attitude down there, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, everybody's trying to get to the league. It's very competitive. So, um, you know, I just embraced, you know, my role, embraced the, where I was in my life, and enjoyed that. And you felt like you were an NBA player, so you're confident to go down there, work on your game, have the right attitude, and your time is going to come eventually. Of course. I mean, you keep putting the work in, you're going to see a breakthrough at some point. And that goes for anything in life, right? So, And, and that's what I did. That's always been my mindset. Trey Jones scored on one end. Kaminga's had two great drives and finishes. And so a six-point game. Both teams, the pyrotechnics from Wembenyama to begin things. And, and they just got a lot of guys who can put it in the basket. And Jetty Osmond, he came over as kind of a throw-in salary cap situation. And yet, Osmond's been a quality player in the league. And so they're kind of stacking up depth in San Antonio. And the mentality has changed. Uh, we got to be a contender. ASAP. Right. Last year was like, let's just have fun. Teaching is. They missed the three ball. 
You want to still take advantage of Wembenyama being out of the game. Kaminga had the right idea attacking the basket, JTH. What about Kaminga this offseason? He's been incredible, Woo! right? I love to see the jump from him. As I said, he's only 21, and this offseason and the way he's played in the preseason to lead the NBA in scoring is Saric's foul. To see how lethal that pump fake is, like, if you're a big, if you're anybody, you can shoot it, throw that pump fake in there. That's going to make them respect that and a little just going to be able to get to the basket easier. They, they got to respect it. You know he can shoot it. You got to get close to him, just respect that, and then uh, you're kind of dead to rights there. <laughs> Saric is a good example for someone that when you blow out your ACL, you know, 10 years ago, 50, oh, was this guy ever going to come back? We're going to see, we see Clay with an Achilles and a knee. We're going to see KD with an Achilles on Tuesday. You have Saric who hurt his knee in the finals, has come back and played. Like, I always admire the comeback. That's why Sean Livingston was always one of my guys. That, you know, when you see a significant injury, the work it takes for someone to come back and then to be playing again, you just pull for them even harder. Yeah. It's really hard. I guys, mean, the yeah. mental part of it is really hard. There are days where you just, like, what am I doing this for? I mean, I, I've never had a knee injury, but, you know, I've had some other uh, significant injuries, and so I've experienced that. Yeah, the rehab is so redundant usually. Right. As Bassey scores inside. So three years at Western Kentucky for Charles Bassey, the 53rd pick in 2021. And Jetty Osmond, I was mentioning him, he came in the Max Struess trade. So Miami's trying to do a sign and trade with Cleveland, but money-wise it didn't work out. So San Antonio's like, hey, we got a little extra room. We'll, we'll take Jetty Osmond, and that's – when you're managing the cap, those are the kind of things that you get the benefit from. It's a good pickup. It is a good pickup. That experience. I know Steve Kerr did not want to see 42 points for the Spurs in the first quarter. Coming down to the final 25 ticks. Kaminga for three, and he got it! Kaminga shooting it. I love to see it. Kaminga's still doing his thing. I've got seven in four minutes here in the first quarter. Pretty good. Imagine how hard he's going to be to guard when he's yeah. really, really, really shooting the ball like that consistently. Yeah. I mean, he can get to the rim at ease, play above the rim. Come on, man. Shot clock off. A little runner by Bassey. 2.5 to work with, but the Chris Paul. A running three to end it, and that will do it. So San Antonio, if you've never seen Wembenyama, 12 points in seven minutes. Spurs put up 44. Mike Dunleavy's going to sub in for JTA, but you're going to be back in the second half, right? Don't forget about me. <laughs> <laughs> San Antonio up nine at the end of one. Get ready for the final wrap-up of the preseason. And Warriors general manager Mike Dunleavy, nice enough to sit alongside. And so we had Juan Toscano Anderson in the first quarter. The Warriors gave up 44. We said, bring in Dunleavy and let's talk about defense. <laughs> I mean, I could probably do a little better than that. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk actually about the offseason because we were remarking yeah. Chris Paul, Corey Joseph, Dario Saric. We love Pojemski and Trace Jackson Davis. It's a big role for you. You were busy, but Steve loves the roster. We love it, and it's exciting to get ready to go on Tuesday. Yeah, we made some uh, subtle changes, I'd say. Most of our uh, stalwarts are back, and, uh, you know, we filled in around the fringes and some guys that will be really important for our team this year. So, you know, we're excited about it. Um, you know, I think, I think Steve says, it, as he likes to say, the roster fits. It all makes sense. And uh, you know, we'll see how it works out as the season goes along. Well, you add a Hall of Famer in Chris Paul. Saric is a stretch big who can also play in and out. Corey Joseph doesn't turn the ball over. I know that was a, an area to address. And then you'd been scouting Pajemski and Trace Jackson Davis. And I think it's okay to say the Warriors had Trace Jackson Davis rated a lot higher than 57th in the draft. I think that was a value selection. Yeah, we feel fortunate to be able to get Trace uh, with the second to last pick in the draft. Uh, we think he's going to be a really good player. He, you know, played four years at college basketball uh, experienced tough skilled uh, showed a little bit of that the other night in a preseason game here against Sacramento filling in for uh for Loon. So, um, you know, all these guys, these young guys, it's getting them reps, it's getting them used to the game, getting them confident, and uh, seeing what they can do. I was talking to you yesterday, and I was like, man, you're making it look easy. I know it's not. Just talk about your mindset when it comes to looking for players to fit this system 
be able to play with Steph, especially like the veteran guy, like Dario Sarge, Corey Joseph, just the mindset that goes into that. Like this is not just any regular team, but the system is a little different. It's really not for everybody, right? Yeah, well look, to be clear, the easy part is done. You know, you have a Steph Curry, you have a Draymond Green, you have a Clay Thompson, uh, Andrew, all these, these guys who've been so good and helped us win championships. Uh, it, it's really understanding the rest of the guys and how do we complement complement our stars. And you just saw Chris Paul and Sarge. They played together in Phoenix. And I, I think that Chris was very happy you signed Dario as well as everybody else that he was available and you're able to grab him. We were fortunate to get Dario. I mean, we think he's a, a, a really good, versatile big. Um, those guys are hard to find. They fit our system. You know, he can stretch the floor. He can roll the basket. Uh, he can make plays off the dribble, off the, off the handoff, all the things we need. And... Um, you know, there's not a lot of go th those guys out there. We targeted him. We were able to get him. And so uh, we feel good about it. And the rapport is already there with Dario Sarge and Chris Paul. And Chris Paul can develop a rapport with anybody. He's so smart. Such a great pick and roll player. Great decision maker. Now, Mike, at 6'9", you played 15 years in the league, and you were a large, small forward. Uh, Mr. Wembenyama <laughs> is incredible to watch already in a very short period of time. We've had so much fun watching him in the first quarter. I don't, I don't want to break any rules here with the NBA, but, I mean, just never seen anything like this guy uh, from a from a physical standpoint, his length, his size, his skill. Um, you know, it's great for the NBA. Really great for the NBA to have to be. He's going to such a quality organization. San Antonio is, you know, kind of set the standard for multiple decades from R.C. Buford to Pop to, you think of Manu and Tony Parker, the incredible Tim Duncan, all the winning, all the consecutive playoff years, all the championships. And I think Wembenyama was super happy to be drafted by the Spurs. And Pop's like, New lease on life. I'm rejuvenated. I have the most wins ever. I'm adding a bunch more now that we got him. So time out on the floor. Mike Dunleavy's hanging out with us. San Antonio with the 12-12. There were nearly 14,200 people at Chase Center last night for a Warrior Open practice. It all benefited the Warrior Community Foundation. Hey, hey, Anthony hey, Marine. Hey, 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 hey. They made him dance. <laughs> then you had the rookie hazing with Brandon Pojemski. He sang Sweet Caroline. He had members of the training staff, my girl. This was and, it, And though. then Halo from Trace Jackson Davis. Kalana, what notes did he hit at the very end? like, though. Woo! This the fun. Did you think when you got him with the 57th pick, I figured you would probably be the crowd favorite, but not for his falsetto, though. Did you know that, Mike? <laughs> I was just happy they didn't make the rookie GM sing. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Hey, you escaped. Wait yeah, a minute. Wait what a minute. There? <laughs> that, that is a longtime Warrior tradition as GP2 puts it up and in off the feed from Saric is all the rookies or first-year staff members have to sing in front of the whole crowd. And I, I just think you see the chemistry and the fun of the group really come on as Wembenyama misses that three. You know, yeah. we started that when I was here. Um, I don't remember doing it my rookie year, but I remember you. when Monte was a rookie, um, he, uh, he, we told him he needed to sing, and he... You know, he was refusing to do it. And then so we said, okay, if you're not going to pick a song, we will. And we ended up picking uh, uh, I'm a Little Teapot. Okay. <laughs> and so somebody, Raymond's got to have that with, with some footage with that. But uh, that's the last time I remember seeing that go on. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, they made me dance. I didn't get to sing when I was a rookie. But, yeah, they got to do something. So you saw Kamenga find Chris Paul for the three. But San Antonio continues. The Spurs are shooting 62% here. And final preseason game. I'm looking forward to Tuesday night, not only to start the season, Mike, but Kevin Durant and his first trip back to chase in front of fans and the ovation he's going to get. You're in the free agency business now as a GM. When you sign a free agent who wins you two titles and a third trip to the finals, that's about as good a three-year return as you can get on a free agent. I'd say so. It's, it's hard to believe that he hasn't been back in front of the fans since, um, you know, 2019 when he left. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll honor him in the right way. And uh, they got a heck of a team. You know, we got our hands full opening night. Uh, our defense uh, is not what it needs to be tonight. And uh, we'll have to be a lot better. I know you're not. Week. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I, your face. I know you're not surprised by what Kaminga's done this preseason. But how impressed are you the way he's played and how much are you looking forward to the step that he's going to take this season? 
Yeah, I mean, I love I love Jonathan's intent. Uh, you know, his the work that he's put in this summer and, and came out in camp in the preseason and just taking it right to teams, taking it, whether it's our own guys in practice or, or preseason games. There's been no let up. Um, I just I just love his intent, his focus, and what he's got going on. And, uh, he's poised to have, a, I think, a really good season. Yeah, the delay was that Keldon Johnson, who's shooting the free throws, had to put in a contact lens. So Billy Kennedy gave him the time to put that in and missed the free throw. We were talking about the Suns on Tuesday. You can join us at Chase Center for opening night against Phoenix, presented by Chase Freedom. All fans get the opening night T-shirt at 888-GSW-HOOP, and all the tickets available at warriors.com. And, the, Mike, the West is going to be crazy this year with Bradley Beal with the Suns. Obviously, Denver's still up there, the Lakers. It's going to be tough in the West this year. It's, it's deep. You know, there's just not going to be any easy nights. Uh, even a, a team like San Antonio here, who maybe people think are still going to be still going to be down. I mean, look at look at the roster they have. These young guys and, you know, one heck of a, a rookie with one manana. So uh, there's not going to be any off nights. Last year, you know, it's interesting, um, you know, finishing with 44 wins. You know, we had some injuries, but so did some other teams. So all those other teams are looking to be healthy as well. And I think it's going to be a really, really competitive Western Conference this season. And ben Yama could not quite guide that home. Oh, we missed Kaminga. You saw that, Mike. From our from our vantage point uh, up here in the cheap seats. <laughs> Easy. We, we saw we saw a lot. Kaminga. You saw how high had to put that one up. They're having to get used to playing against this eight-foot wingspan. Kaminga's like, I got something for you, big man. I just think Kaminga basically leading the NBA in scoring for the preseason. And the efficiency when he shot the ball. That one wide right, but then followed in by Keldon Johnson. Air ball goes to the offense. Weird how that happens. Mike, the Warriors open with seven of the first nine on the road. They finished with nine of 12 on the road. As Kaminga's fouled there, I know the the road play last year, 11 road wins, and Kaminga will be one of those energy guys on the road that can help out. But I know that that's something you, the coaching staff, everyone's like, look, on the road, we, we got to be better than 11 wins. We do, and I think part of it, though, is figuring out why we only won 11 games on the road. And, you know, obviously you can point to our defense and the other team's shot making and all that, but uh, uh, I've never seen such a bizarre swing in terms of home and road in, in the NBA. So um, hopefully some of that luck will swing back our way, but we need to make some of it. And I think our guys are focused on going out there and we'll be tested right away. Uh, a couple road trips to start the season and um, heading back east and, you know, we got we to gotta be about business. How much did you talk to Steph and Clay and Draymond about some of the acquisitions of the roster management? Obviously, you talked to Steve, but these guys are Hall of Famers. You know, th their voices matter. How's that dialogue go in your role as a GM? Yeah, I really value those guys' opinions. Um, just not only because they're great players, because they, they've been here a long time. They know what it takes, and they play against these guys that, you know, we may sign or trade for or inquire, and uh, to always get their, their viewpoint, their opinion on things. And, uh, you know, it doesn't mean we always, you know, agree, but, you know, I want to hear what they have to say and, you know, make sure we're all on the same page. So Chris Paul putting it up and in. Chris Paul in transition is going to be a story we will follow. You talk to Chris, he's like, I've played every style you want. So you want to get up and down? I can still do it after 19 years in the league. Warriors cut it to four, and the Spurs take time. Brought to you by Mancini Sleep World. Visit our massive clearance event or visit sleepworld.com. Final preseason game. Mike Dunleavy is joining us in the second. Juan Toscano Anderson is joining us throughout the game. And Monday night football, the Niners, the Vikings. Check out my man Rod Brooks with Dante Whitner and Carlos Ramirez. And 4 p.m., 49er pregame live. And they also have a great postgame show. 49ers. That was a little tough one in Cleveland, but I was there for the Cowboy game. And the Niners, when they're right, uh, I think they and the Eagles are on a collision course in the NFC. I agree with that. Mike, we just saw Chris Paul doing his thing. He's out of the he's out of the game now. But what were those talks like when you made that happen? I know you guys went to was it Miller and Lux, and he was talking about man. I used to play against this guy for a long time, and now he's my GM. So what what are those talks been like between you two? 
Yeah, I mean, we're probably more of the same generation than a lot of these guys on the team. So uh, we certainly relate. We competed against each other for many years. Um, and, you know, Chris is one of the best to ever do it uh, the point guard position and really in all of basketball. So um, he's great, uh, really, really mature dude and uh, knows his stuff, knows what he's talking about. And got a ton of respect for him. Happy he's uh, he's got Golden State on his chest. That's for sure. <laughs> Defensive three second violation. Steph makes the technical free throw. Also, too, people forget Chris Paul and Steph in the whole North Carolina thing. I mean, that was kind of Jedi master and protege, and then obviously Steph happened. But Chris Paul and Steph have been very close for a number of years, and so I, I think the intriguing thing is the way Steve has played them both together, and Steph gets to play off the ball. You already got Clay and Steph as shooters, and Chris Paul can handle it, and that should be the reduction of turnovers, which I know is a goal on some of the moves in the offseason. Sure, yeah, I mean, we think we can play a lot of different ways, and uh, but to just add in the IQ of Chris Paul, uh, you know, his, his smarts, his intelligence, uh, he gets us set up, he gets us settled down. Um, you know, even though we've got other veteran guys, doesn't mean you can't can't use another vet. So uh, I think he's he's a great addition to the mix, and uh, he'll fit right in. To that point, there was a lot of workouts where Steph and Chris Paul got together before Chris Paul was with us, with the Warriors, and the running joke is when they were playing pickup in summer during the summer in Las Vegas or wherever they were, Chris Paul was calling out Warrior sets before he ever practiced or did anything with the Warriors. So the guys, he's on it already. He's, well, a, I mean, he's a coach on the floor. Yeah. If we're being honest. I mean, he's, there's nothing he hasn't seen, and uh, you know, there, there could be a, a adaptation period, but you know, he's going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out, and uh, in the end, I think we'll have a great product. Clay missing there. Clay had one of the funniest lines. We've talked about the informal mini camps where the players all got together and Clay was guarding Chris Paul and they've done it obviously so many times in so many different iterations and Chris was dribbling the ball. He said, not anymore, Clay. In the regular <laughs> season, we're, we're brothers. We're teaming. Not anymore. No more of guarding you and me guarding you back and forth. So Clay was kind of having fun with that. This guy went with Yama. Ridiculous. And there's another oh, shot. Right on cue. Right on cue. You always got to know where he is on the floor. The eight foot wingspan and the movement and the skill level. And then you think he's 19 years old. Shot clock at two. Blade's got to get one up. And there's Wembenyama just tipping the rebound to himself. Victor Wembenyama. Use the M at the end. Yama he is something else. He's a handful. He is, as they say, a problem. Turn around fade away there with Keldon Johnson. He won a gold medal with Steve Kerr and Greg Popovich in Tokyo. They have some solid young players with Vassell and Keldon Johnson. And then whatever they, I don't know if it's going to be Victor, if it's going to be Wemby, or whatever his nickname is going to ultimately be, but he is. This is our first time to see him in person. He is remarkable. Well, Wemby just saved a layup there. He came off Kaminga, who's going back door. That length is probably going to save a lot of layups, clean up a lot of mistakes. How do you only average three blocks for Mets 92 last year? He's probably going to average. Well, whoever was six. keeping the blocks in Europe was <laughs> and the they were asleep on the, the job. Well, the metric system or something <laughs> happened because my goodness, <laughs> he is something else. There's the shots he blocks and there's the shots he alters. Exactly. I mean, that, now you know who you just quoted there. That was Bill Russell's thing. That's right. That is not the shots that I get to. It's the shots you I'm thinking about and you're thinking about me being around. And once he influenced Jim Barnett used to say that all the time is that they didn't keep blocks until 1973. Wilt and Bill Russell would have broken every record there ever was in terms of block shots. But it's the ones you get. And then just what Mike said, it's the ones that he's a factor. Where is he all the time? It's funny you mentioned Bill Russell because Jerry West actually said when Yama's like a bigger Bill Russell defensively, which wow. is huge. He's going to I mean, you know, the interesting thing with him is he's going to change a little bit of the the shot blocking game and the rim protection game in a sense of like th this guy blocks shots in the perimeter. He blocks yeah. threes. So, you know, we look at advanced numbers on rim protection and all that. Well, he, he's what are we doing with the guy who's out block, blocking three pointer? It's just unheard of. And so, um, you know, look out, look out. Kaminga defensively and Keldon Johnson threw it away. Steph was in the passing lane. And Curry runs right to the three point line. And Looney keeping it alive, putting it up and in and drawing the foul. 
JTA said it, best rebounder in the game. He's not taking anything for granted. He's running the floor. In case there's a miss, I'm going to be there to gobble it up. Look at him working hard, doing his work early. He even fought his own man, Kaminga, trying to come in there and get an offensive rebound. Yeah, JK, JK kept that one alive. I mean, that's one yeah. of the things we're emphasizing with him this season is just crashing the glass on both ends, but especially offensively, just go, go now, every time. Kalena, there was an ugly moment on Wednesday where Mike, as a first year GM, had to talk to Kavon Looney. He said, Wait, you're skipping a game? What, what, what's going on here? I mean, I thought all 82, all 82, he's missing a preseason game. I'm not going there. I, I don't want I don't want to jinx the guy. He's his health has been impeccable and uh, you know, we need a third year like that. We were saying that the loony bobblehead is indestructible. You can bounce it all over the floor or whatever. But you cannot break it. He is just fantastic. Everybody appreciates that, including Dub Nation. Show up. You, you know, you used a good word last night at the open practice, a phrase that I hadn't really thought about. You said, hey, teams have superstars. But then you have to have kind of rock stars in terms of guys that are rocks. Yeah. Looney and GP2 and, and just steady Eddie guys that show up every night. And, you know, I think of Sean Livingston and Zaza Pachulia and David West and people that are building blocks and bricks and our friend Andre Godala who retired today. The fans see stats and stuff, but within a team framework, guys like Kavon Looney, man, they, they are the foundational type of pieces too. Yeah, you know, when I was at uh, Duke, Coach K used to always, you know, encourage everybody to star in their role. And, um, you know, we have guys like that, as you mentioned, with Loon and GP and over the years with Sean and Andre. They, they just know how to play and compliment. And because of that, they, you know, they're stars on a championship team. And uh, that's that's how great teams are built. And uh, fortunately, we've got a, a, quite a few guys who are, who are willing to play that role. You know, one of the things from a year ago, Kay, I think of this man. Andrew Wiggins played only 37 games, say. okay? This has been an incredibly durable player. He's so steady. He's so big on both ends of the floor offensively and defensively. Went through an awful lot in his personal life in addition to being banged up a little bit. I think having Andrew for a full season, that adds so much more than a year ago. And just his demeanor. Everybody loves him. Love to see him smiling. And he plays his role so well, Mike. You talk about being a rock star and starring your role. Like he picks his spots so well. He's a guy you can throw it to, ISO, he can go get you a bucket, get to the rim, super athletic. They love playing with that guy. Yeah, I mean, obviously, looking back on our championship team in 2022, his playoff run, I mean, he was, you know, in some ways our second best player. Mm -hmm. And the way he defended, the way he rebounded, the way he scored. And, you know, we're going to need another big year from Wiggs uh, for us to, to, to go where we need to go. Steph Curry wing jumper is perfect. Rockstar setting a great screen. Looney got him open. Sohan just couldn't stay with him because of Looney. away again. Chris Paul had a hand on him, but ricochets right over to Vassell. Shot clock at five, and Vassell off fire there. Strong rebound inside. Zach Collins giving San Antonio another opportunity. Jeremy Sohan from deep. And he drops it in. And Collins has been working hard tonight. These guys are big. You know, they they start five guys over 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and um, that prevents, you know, that, that creates problems for us. Yeah, that's about the fourth time Steph has been on the deck tonight. I know the season starts Tuesday. I, I don't need him bounce around like a pinata in the final preseason game. But he's been in the weight room, Mike. He can take it. He can dish out punishment, too, now. I agree with that. Let's keep him on his feet. <laughs> Put a little bubble wrap out there. <laughs> No, but you talked about what gives people problems. What gives opponents problems against the Warriors is Steph's movement without the ball. And that's one thing when Chris came over, Steph was like, hey, this is going to be great because I move really well without the ball. I'd love, I'd love playing without the ball. So he can kind of float around. Everybody's got to worry about him. Opens up the floor for everybody else, too. Yeah, I think one of the things we envisioned with Chris, Chris's addition is you know, years ago, you guys remember with Steph and Clay flying around, you had Jared Jack as a, kind of a secondary ball handler feeding those guys coming off screens. I and mean, we're, we're going to be able to do some of that as well, which we've kind of gotten away from in, in, the, in the past few years. So uh, these guys, Steph's ability to play on and off the ball just allows you to do so many different things. And you said screens. What superstar is willing to set screens like Steph does? Like these 
bone crushing screens he sets. The first screen, the stagger screen, he's so unselfish with that. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, Kalina from playing. I mean, one of the best ways to get open for yourself is to set a screen for a teammate. And, um, you know, Steph, Steph recognizes that. And tons of back picks and things like that just to free himself up or get a teammate an easy one. Saric with good hands to knock that away. Did, did you hear Mike take a cheap shot of me there, Kalina? He said, you know, okay, from having played <laughs> as he looked away from me. Man, that, I thought Mike and I were tight. Hey, well done, Mike. I love it. <laughs> Steph Curry from deep off iron. And Zach Collins keeps it alive. There's going to be no easy nights in the Western Conference. And I think from maybe the three seed to the eight seed, you might be only one or two games separating, which is why, as Wemmen Yama misses that three, every game on the road, every home game, every opportunity, if you lose a couple that you shouldn't have, you could be anything from the three down to the play-in, the way the West is going to be. Yeah, there's a lot of parity. I think our guys sense that. And, you know, that's the reason we've got to get off to a good start. Continue to play well throughout the season, but uh, you know, playoff TV and all that. Right. Sorry, with the three. Well, we will have the final timeout of the first half, and Mike Denley is going to give us some in-season tournament thoughts when we come back. So, final minute 29 of the first half, Spurs lead at nine. In-season tournament from our guy who, having played, he'll have some thoughts. The in-season tournament, the quest for the NBA Cup, these are the four games the Warriors will play in their bracket. OKC and Minnesota, these Spurs and the Kings. So, Mike, 15 years in the league, I've asked Kay as a former player as well. What do you think about the in-season tournament? These games needed to be played regular season-wise anyway, but they lead to something, and there's a payout for the players and I think some interest from the fans. Yeah, I think it's great. Um, you know, as a player, you get excited for the start of the season, and then there's a little bit of a lull, and you settle into to, to a groove. but here we are bringing in sort of competitive, important basketball in November, which is which is unusual. It's actually a little bit like when we used to play in college, you know, the holiday tournaments and things like that. So I think it'll be good. I think the guys are going to embrace it. I think the fans will find it entertaining. And, and it's a it's a I think it's a really smart idea. I totally agree. Didn't the guys tell you they're trying to win this year? They're trying to win the first one. And they said, yeah, I mean, I think anytime you you offer up some hardware and some uh, some, some financial payouts uh, these guys <laughs> have shown over the years uh, just an unbelievable willingness to compete so I, I um, thought we were going to stop the ball and give it to one of the coaches we had an actual three second violation <laughs> turning the ball over there you'll see one or two of those the entire season you'll see defensive three second violations a lot but not offensively you say the financial payout the financial payout isn't small like not everybody's making 30 40 million a year no, it's a good little incentive. Gives some, you know, gives guys a little something to pay, play for beyond what they're already making. And uh, no, it's, it's, I think it's a really good concept, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Yeah. Good hustle there by San Antonio and Trey Jones, earning the extra possession, but not a reset of the shot clock because Sohan's jumper was an air ball. Wembenyama, you know, he's always going to be able to get a shot off at 7-3. Wemby is 6 of 15 and 2 of 6 on threes tonight. <laughs> Steph, Steph was fouled there. Now, the one thing Kalen and I were having fun with, Chris Paul, when there were four team fouls when he was an opponent, <laughs> would bump into somebody. He'd bump into the PA announcer, an assistant coach, whatever, and get free throws. It was a skill unmatched by any other guard I've ever seen. And now he's in a Warrior uniform doing it. I'm looking forward to that. Well, he knows about it. He had to play against it. I can sense it in your voice. You know, I mean, that's part of the, you know, the free throw disparity that we've had is fouling less, but also getting fouled more. Right. And uh, yep. Chris is a guy that is aware of stuff when you're in the bonus. And J.K., who just checked in, I mean, he's got a tremendous ability to get fouled. Fouled. And not only does that help him get to the line and, you know, get a couple free throws, but it also puts us in the bonus earlier and allows guys like Steph and, you know, Clay, guys that are high, high, 90% you know, free throw shooters. It's a, it benefits the team. It's super smart. I mean, just he did it to JaVale McGee against Sacramento on Wednesday and got yeah. two free points. Warriors won that game by a single point on Steph's three. So it totally matters. Yeah, Chris is so thoughtful. It's also taking advantage of the way the officials are calling the game. He's going to recognize that. Like, hey, guys, let's get to the basket as Collins gets to the basket again. I'm happy to see Zach Collins healthy because when he was in Portland, banged up a little bit, San Antonio banged up, but th this is a kid that has a lot of skills, high motor, and for him to be healthy as they're building things in San Antonio, 
when when he's right, he's a nice piece. I mean, former lottery pick. I mean, you can see why. Now that he's healthy, his body's filled out, uh, does a lot of good things, and uh, you know he'll, he'll he'll fit in well here in San Antonio. We'll compliment Victor. His motor is super high. That's not a problem. He's really moving well. Active on the boards. He's saying, I'm going to outwork you guys. Kaminga rebounding that. Two seconds left. Step. Little half hook. <laughs> There's always a chance with that always guy. Always a chance. <laughs> Mike, thanks for stopping by. We really appreciate it. You can now avoid us the whole rest of the season. <laughs> You've right, done, guys, you done your it. TV duty. <laughs> Mike appreciate Dunleavy you, with us. We've hit halftime. Spurs. Mr. Wembenyama may be a problem. We can tell you more about the in-season tournament coming up next. Area is brought to you by Toyota. Class leading MPG and more hybrid models than any other brand. Toyota, let's go places. And by DaVinci Marble. Create timeless spaces with DaVinci's vast array of hand-selected slabs and tile. Get ready to begin the third quarter with San Antonio with the nine point lead and Juan Toscano Anderson subs back in. Back in the, game. the first, Dunleavy in the second. Can you stay for the rest of the game at least? We need you. That's my plan. Because I got 82 to deal with Kalena, so. Yeah, I get tired of him, man. We, so, we need your presence here. Also hey, if you want to win, put JTA in. <laughs> <laughs> also, 272 in the first half. Juan was doing wind sprints in the back of the broadcast booth, getting ready for that. So That's dedication. <laughs> <laughs> really what, impressive. What is it? about the mindset to play 100 miles an hour like you do all the time. Where, where does that come from? Oof. Is it in your DNA? Is it one of those deals where, hey, I'm just, I, I'm going to show that energy is something that I'm going to bring all the time. Chris Ball was not going to let that slide. <laughs> <start. laughs> right. Coming out of the second half, the San Antonio stealing the first possession. Uh, I think it's a little bit of um, mindset. Um, also understanding that this is the best league in the world. I'm not as talented as, you know, some look at the guy with the ball now, you know, so how do I, uh, you know, compensate for some of those things? How do I you know, make a mark in this league? Like I said, this is the best league in the world. Ooh, oh, Wiggins got into Wimbenyama and stapled him to the floor as he laid it in. And bodied him. That's the physicality you're looking for. I like that from Wiggins. Sohan's got the post up and look who's been in the weight room, Steph Curry. That's a lot stronger than people think. But to what you were saying earlier, Steph turns it over. Speaking of Steph Curry, help us understand, help the fans understand what it's really like to play with a guy like Steph Curry and try to pick your spots, try to look for him, to relocate, look at the screen for him. Like, what's that like playing in this system where you got Steph Curry run all over the place like that? Well, there's two things. You have to be in shape and you have to understand reads. Um, because, like I said, there's organized chaos with, you know, he and Clay. They're, they're just looking for, you know, open shots. Any shot, any open shot from those two guys is a good shot. I don't care what anybody says. So um, they're just looking for open space. And as, you know, their teammate, you too have to be looking for, you know, open space, you know, slips, uh, where you can get easy buckets and things like that. Um, his gravitational pull is incredible. He and Clay. So, you know, it's, it's easy to get open if you can understand the game. And I think that's why Draymond Green is so good because he understands the game so much. He understands how guys are guarding Steph and Clay, uh, you know, how his man has guarded him. And he understands angles. And uh, like I said, he understands the game. So he, he makes the game easy for himself and those guys as well. I got to play with Steph. When he first got in the league for a little bit, you got to play him when he was really Steph Curry. And, and you really were great moving without the ball. And I thought that's one of the reasons you flourished with this team, playing with a guy like Steph and Draymond Green with all the vision. You knew how to get those easy buckets and cut and move without the ball, especially when defenders are falling asleep focused on those guys. Yeah, for sure. Like I said, any shot from those guys is a good shot. I'll, I'll live with it. So, and, and most defenses know that. They're going to, you know, go all out trying to stop those guys. So, like I said, as, you know, their teammates, you have to understand where your open spots will be. A little frustration there. Wiggins and Steph with a miscommunication on that out-of-bounds play. And the Warriors only have nine turnovers tonight. They had 22 the other night. So clearly a point of emphasis the preseason and tonight. And Benyama unable to fully extend. The only problem is I think they had five in the first half. So they're already up to nine here. Play on that reload three. A little short. I like this lineup here, though. A lot of people may think it's small, but I trust Wiggs and, you know, play to uh, guard some bigger 
wings, some fours. They're well, both strong enough to do that. You, you were kind of a Swiss Army knife defensively. What is that mindset if you're, quote, undersized getting rid of your matchup? What are things you do to compensate? Do you run the guy and things like that? Yeah, but I don't really believe in the undersized thing. I mean, defense is a team. The basketball is a team sport, and defense is a team effort. Um, you know, yeah, you have guys like Draymond Green and, you know, the Drew Holidays of the world who are, and, and Gary Payton's of the world who are incredible on-ball defenders. But like I said, defense is more of a team thing. It's a team scheme. So you can hide guys and you can, you know, kind of dictate the offense and influence the offense to do certain things that you want the offense to do. And so, you know, if these guys all buy in and they put an emphasis on that, I think they'll have no issues with that. You know, a lot of people try to hunt out Steph as if he's a bad defender, but he really puts in a lot of, oh my God, another block from Wimby. After a pump. <laughs> but he, you know, he puts in a lot of effort oh, as well. Steph oh, got a little critical. space, but <laughs> pulled the string short. You got to get tricky. But to your point, JTA, the oh, rebounding is so key as well when you're small as Johnson draws a foul. And just if guys are just thinking about rebounding, you saw what the Warriors were just doing on the offensive side last year. I thought they made that a weapon, their offensive rebound, just thinking about going and, and snatching up the ball, taking advantage of those opportunities defensively, the guards coming back in and helping the big guys when they go help. So, I mean, just having that mentality is key, you know? Right. You, Look at Juan was waiting for the promo. I like that. Jerry <laughs> Seinfeld and <laughs> we, Jim we Gaffigan missed it last coming time. to Chase Center. <laughs> and they've added a second show on Thursday, November 2nd, all at ChaseCenter.com. I love Seinfeld. I love Jim Gaffigan. We're out of town during that. Oh, man. We're on a road trip. Yeah. But you got to come to Chase Center. Two shows for Seinfeld. Count me in. But speak to the rebounding mentality because that's going to be so key for this Warrior team this year, JTA. It's attitude and effort. You just put a body on guys, box them out, somebody go get the basketball. I mean, it's not rocket science. But I'm making it sound easier said than done, but, you know, uh, all these guys are very capable guys. That's why they're all out there in the NBA. So, uh, like I said, I think you just put an emphasis on that. Team rebound, gang rebound. Uh, I think you'll be all right. And like I said, you got the best rebounder in the NBA on your team, Kevon Looney. Shout out to that guy, Iron Man. Two seasons straight, 82 games plus the playoffs. No joke. Come on, man. Pay that guy. Pay that guy the whole bank. Watch us kind of Anderson Looney's agent. <laughs> As Wembenyama soaring in in the open floor. And Steve Kerr's going to use the timeout. I got a hot take when we come back. I need to hear that. All right. Wembenyama jumped from outside the paint. JTA's doing broadcast teases here in the second half. <laughs> Eight and a half remaining in the third. Well, if Gobert's the Stifle Tower, get the nickname machine ready for this guy. I don't know what we're going to call him. With eight and a half remaining in the third, Juan Toscano Anderson said hot take, hot take heading into the break. All right, lay it on me. Does number five go in the rafters after Kavon Looney, you know, whether he retires here or goes on to play Ooh. somewhere else? But hopefully he's a dub for life, but does number five go in the rafters? So this is Kavon Looney's ninth year. I think he's so. 27 years old. <laughs> vet. Okay. Young vet. So Steph's 35. I mean, if Looney plays here 17 years or something like that, I think he's got to go. And he's in the part of five titles or whatever the Warriors finally finish with. I think there's certain guys that's like, oh my goodness, Kaminga almost too athletic brought the house down. But I think there's certain guys that are statue guys, right? Steph, Clay, Draymond. There's certain key guys you got to give the jersey not in the Raptors to. I think Looney's one of those guys. He's earned it. 82 games. We talked about that two years back to back. The availability is always there. He's reliable, rebounding. He, we talked about this too. We went to Scotland and we ran into like 10 guys with his jersey. But he's oh, well wow. known globally oh, now. This guy's a superstar. Oh, wow. well, I love him. So cool. Glenn, love it. Glenn and I are at the British Open. We see this guy in a loony jersey. We see a warrior number five. So we asked him, like, what, what's the deal? He goes, oh no, all of our friends are wearing loony jerseys. Wow. Yeah. So we're like, okay, we got to go find these guys. So we find all 10 of them. They have the loony jerseys on. We're taking pictures and everything. They recognize Glenn. They wonder who the hell's bothering them. And me. <laughs> but but, but then we take we, we take the picture and we send it to Steph and say, "Hey, in Scotland, you're nothing. It's all loony." <laughs> I love that. It, it was, it, and, we, and then we showed Kavan, and he just thought it was the greatest thing ever. Yeah. He deserves that, man. Yeah, these ten guys bonded over their love for Kavan. Well, here's the classic: is they have placed a wager on the Warriors to win the championship before the season, and it paid off. So that paid for their golf trip to the British Open. Wow. And and that's and they all love Looney, and they all they they rock the Looney jerseys at the tournament.
beautiful. That's nice. The universe blessed him there. Well, that's a good question. I think he should go up in the Raptors. What do you a, think? You, you agree? Good, that's I agree. a good hot take. I like that. I agree 100%. I mean, he's been a vital piece of, you know, the culture here. We look at just the championships, but the whole makeup of the organization. Moses Moody did not play in the first half, getting some run here. Sharich will draw the foul. Okay. I now, see. both of you guys could attack the rim, so I want to go back to that Wiggins play on Wembenyama. He's blocked his shot a number of times, but Andrew said, okay, let me get into the body. Right. And what's the art of doing that against a superior shot block? I mean, you, just gotta, you have to take up the space. You have to understand angles, and sometimes, more often than not, you try to use the rim as a protector. So try to finish around the rim and manipulate the, the situation a little bit. Guys can't go through the rim, so you try to do that. Yeah, you never want to shy away from contact because with the shot blocker like that, and JT, you know this, you start trying to get fancy yeah. and go up and under and trying to avoid him. You're playing into his hand. Right. Make it easier for him to block a shot. If you do like Andrew Wiggins did, get into the body, see if you can create some space. You make it a little easier to finish. There's some guys with their timing, they're just uncanny. They're, they're going to alter your shot regardless. But with a guy like that, you can't just try to get fancy. You may just have to go floater, switch it up, give him different looks. Don't or just go through the body. Exactly. Try to draw a foul. You're not going to get any foul call shine away from the contest. No. The rebound. I like Moody. Moses. Oh, I love that kid. He, he's an old soul. He is. Plays the game the right way. He's always ready for the moment. So Meng had the right idea. Yeah. Tried to return that pass to Magruder. So that's a turnover. You say, oh, it's a turnover, but I can it's live still. With those. But yeah, it was the right basketball play. And that's what you want from guys. You want guys being aggressive. You want guys trying to make plays. I mean, it's the NBA. You have to make plays to win games. And so you live with those. Try to get it back. Now, the Moses Moody comment to Steve Kerr when Steve talked to Moses said, look, you know, as a young player, sporadic minutes, there'll be games you don't play. He said, coach, smooth waters will not make me a better sailor. And so, I mean, and Steve kind of looked at him like, how old are you again? Right. <laughs> Very wise beyond his years. Incredible. Hey, you can send me the G League. I'm ready for it. That speaks to his parents. Oh. You know, I've gotten a chance to know his parents. They're incredible people. Rodney Magruder hitting from deep there. Well, I enjoyed in the summer, Moses had his first basketball camp in Arkansas. And Clay Thompson had said, hey, if you have a camp for kids, you know, I'll come to Arkansas. I'll be there. <laughs> All right, now, tracking Clay down can be somewhat interesting in the offseason. theoretically impossible to track <laughs> down Clay Thompson. Except when Moses Moody had the camp. Who was there? Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson. I was very surprised by that. I'm not going to lie. It is <laughs> really, surprised. really, really hard to track down Clay Thompson. <laughs> Gotta love Clay Thompson. It's but easier to track down Steph Curry than it is Clay Thompson. Ooh. So we got, a ch is it going to challenge this? Yep, they're going to challenge. And the Green Lantern is lit. Coach's challenge with 5.53 remaining in the third. The Spurs lead at 13. Spurs lead at 13 midway through the third. And you can take the Warriors on the go this season. Stream the games on the NBC Sports app. Brought to you by your NorCal Honda dealers. You never know. If you're going to get one to Scott. After reviewing the plays, the personal foul that was called has been overturned. No foul on the play. Due to imminent possession, Golden State will retain possession of the ball. Their timeout, although, they will lose. They also retain the opportunity to challenge again later on in the game. Hey, Bill Kennedy is in mid-season form with his presentation. So the foul was called on Corey Joseph. And if you watch, that is a clean block. So nice. Steve Kerr correctly challenged. What do you the, think about the, the, the new rule, JTA, that they get to retain the, the challenge? Get a the second challenge, challenge if you're right on the if first If you're right on the first one. I like that. I mean, because there are some big plays, you know, like say Stemp has two fouls in the second quarter and he's picking up his third, and you know you're going to win that challenge. Like, you're going to use it, and you get to retain it. You know, because more often than not, you want to save your challenges for more crucial times in the game. And so it's... It's a bind there. It's almost like you played in the NBA because you just said the most perceptive <laughs> thing. In a first half, they was, it was always, well, I'm going to save my challenge in the fourth quarter. But you just hit on it. What if Steph's getting a third foul early? He's going to have to sit use it. a whole half. Yeah, use the challenge. Oh, we got it right. I still have one in the second half. So, so you just perfectly illustrated 
that what the difference will be in that rule change. For sure. And as a coach, if I was a coach, I would be more than willing to risk that challenge for a guy like Steph Curry. I mean, his best ability is his availability. You need him on the floor to win games. So, um, you know, that's a challenge you have to use. Yeah, there's some important plays in the first half that could happen. You want to use them. Magruder had to beat the shot clock. Moses Moody, the offensive rebound. Joseph Rodney Magruder with Moody, Kaminga, and Sohan with the rebound. Now, the other rule is the flopping rule this year, which is going to be a technical, won't be unsportsmanlike, as Joseph with a steal. And Magruder running the lane to lay it up and in and draw the foul. And Magruder's putting in some work here now. Yeah, good numbers there. Running the floor. They ran that fast break pretty well. I was Corey hoping to Joseph. see Kojo throw, the, throw it off the glass. Yeah. Jonathan come down the middle. That would have been fun to see. <laughs> it looked like he thought about it. Right. So he Joseph. shoots the free throw. Tell me about the flopping thing where if it's egregious, and, and they told us a secondary reaction, theatrical, exaggerated, do you think that will take some of the histrionics out of the game? Yes, I really like that rule because I hate that some guys can, man can manipulate the whole game by flopping. That really bothers me. Um, you can put points on the board, you know, um, you know, drawing fouls in an unnatural way. And as a defender, I want to be able to compete just as hard defensively as guys do offensively. I don't want my quote unquote superpowers to be removed because I can't play defense a certain way and guys are out flopping. So I, I really, really love that rule. I think that rule is going to be the most significant in the rule changes as of lately. That doesn't surprise me that you said that because you had no flop in your game. No, but I don't. Guys flop. that had no flop in their game, they hate floppers. I don't shy away from contact. Yeah. Sohan with the rebound after the Trey Jones miss. Warriors trying to dig in a little defensively. Steve Kerr using his bench unit line up here. Kaminga, not only the contest, but the rebound. And Antonio has had the edge really most of the night at 10 right now. And look at Magruder fly in for that rebound. Saric, what a running hook. Nice. And this group is getting some good experience trying to walk the Spurs down, come from behind. Look at Jonathan picking up. I love to see this. Yeah, this is the energy you need all season. Dario Saric has 15 points in 17 minutes. Warriors came from 18 down to beat Sacramento on Wednesday. And oh, Moody with a block. The play, Moody. And then Joseph was fouled. And so hot, doing too much. They picked up their intensity defensively. You could feel it. Trying to get some of that momentum back. Look at Dario Saric putting the ball on the floor. Counter moves behind the back. Nice back. runner. Yeah, Bassey had nothing for that. And then Moses Moody, the recovery closing speed. Sohan was so surprised he got back to that one. And we've had a lot of Bill Russell discussion tonight. What I loved about that block, and Russell would always say, why do guys smack it out of bounds? <laughs> you know, block it and keep it in play and let's go the other way. Come up with it. You can. I think most times we get overzealous and we're just trying to block it as hard as we can. <laughs> Sarich missing that three. You block it out of bounds, the other team still gets the ball. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about Bill Russell. He was tall enough to have that mentality, too. Right. Some of those guys just trying to get up in the air and get a hand on it. And his blocking ability was elite. It was timing. Yeah. Malachi Branham kind of curbing the Warrior momentum there. And so Russell's jersey hangs in the rafter of every NBA facility. The turnovers aren't going to help you trying to cut them behind. Corey Joseph hustled back. Saric was there too, but look at Bassey fill the lane. Well, they were a, a fast-paced team last year. They took advantage of their athletes and fast breaks. Don't expect anything to change for the Spurs this year. We know the Warriors like to run. Well, you're playing for the greatest coach of all time. And so you're going to be fundamentally sound. You're going to learn and know how to play. And Saric and Corey Joseph, there's a little veteran connection, just like Chris Paul has with Saric. And Corey Joseph making the right pass, simple pass, solid decision. What else is new? I like that pickup too, as well, you know. Uh, Doug McDermott, really nice. Normally a great outside shooter, but cutting without the ball. Veteran point guard. Corey also childhood friends with Andrew Wiggins uh -huh. in Toronto, and they've known each other forever. Corey Joseph, last two years in Detroit, best three-point percentage of his career. The most takes, the most makes. And so the water's warm if you want to shoot threes with the dubs. <laughs> Come on in. Yeah, you can't sleep on him out there. Mandatory timeout. And the Spurs still leading by nine.
always having an answer for any kind of warrior momentum. And the one thing I'll say about this preseason, Kalena, I've seen quality efforts from all the teams that we've played, and it speaks because I, you know, I mentioned I do NFL games, and the NFL preseason is just trying to get to the regular season. In the NBA, we've seen some guys put some things on tape and definitely play where the competitiveness took over. And JTA, you know this. You want meaningful minutes. Why go out there if you're not trying to get better and play your best, play basketball the right way? So not only the Warriors and the Spurs, everybody's watching these preseason games. A lot of these guys get an opportunity here of fighting for their NBA lives. Maybe not tonight, but on other teams. 1,000%. And also the bar is high here. You have, got, yeah, some guys are fighting for their lives, but some guys are also fighting for their fifth championship. Guys well, like Steph Curry. From the elbow there. Yep. You know, you see Steph Curry come out the other night, go for 30 points, game winner. I mean, that's competitive nature. And he's here to get another championship. So uh, the bar is high. McDermott cutting again, floating it up and out. Sarge with another rebound. Good outlet pass. First hand to Kaminga. Cutter. JK waiting for the cutter. That's growth right there for Kaminga. Maybe he could have gone up and gotten fouled. He waited for the flasher and got the layup. It's, it's the be quick but don't rush mentality. Right. Saw those two defenders meet him there, and Corey Joseph knows how to move it out the ball. And when you've drawn two, you've done your job. Get off the ball. And uh oh, GP showtime. It away. Showtime. Two on one. Oh! Off the backboard. And then Kaminga was fouled. Come on, Jenny Osmond. Yeah, he was not trying to see Showtime. No, he wasn't. I know these guys too well. I knew as soon as GP got the space, I knew where the ball was going. <sighs> GP probably should have thrown a little harder off the glass and really make. Kaminga go get it so Jetty Osmond wouldn't have a chance, but yeah, he got him on the arm. That or he should have took one more dribble. Yeah. Tell people though, because we love Gary, there are defenders, and guys like Draymond people know are some of the greatest defenders ever, but GP2 is an on ball defender. Alcatraz. <laughs> he's on island. That's amazing. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, he's an incredible. I mean, you look at like I keep saying the same thing, but you look at guys like Steph who are incredible on the offensive end. And then you look at guys like GP who are just elite defensively. And so, you know, he, he also has a reputation. So he's allowed to do a little bit more. So Jenny Osmond hitting that three again. Anytime the Warriors build momentum, the Spurs have had a way to quiet them. Charge setting up Moody. Moses and Kaminga have shot the three at such an incredible rate in the preseason. It gets you excited for the regular season. Malachi Branham long and strong, and Moody with the rebound. They go two for one here if they want. Just go quick. Charge tried to seal, and they couldn't quite get the entry pass to him. Nice pass. And then Moody sent away. That's a nice play by McDermott. He's not known for his defensive prowess. Jenny Osmond lost his footing there, but the Spurs with a four-second difference. Game and shot clock winding down the third. Malachi oh. Brandon there played well by Sharich. Kaminga's got time to work. Final five seconds. Ooh. Nice move. Drop it off to Moody. Patience and the finish. How about Kaminga leading the break? Handle. That's growth. That's the growth from him. McDermott <laughs> online, but that will do it. Jonathan Kaminga, 13 points, six rebounds, and five assists. Chris Paul's got five assists. Kaminga's got five assists. And Kaminga and Moody, that tandem you're going to see a lot of this year. We've had Juan Toscano Anderson. We've had Mike Dunleavy. We've seen Victor Wembenyama. There's been a lot going on here. And San Antonio has played well. The Warriors did win the third, but down seven as we head into the fourth. Our Toyota game summary in the final quarter of the preseason before the Warriors and the Suns start the year on Tuesday. And our first look at the rookies tonight. Brandon Pojemski and Trace Jackson Davis See get an opportunity. Yeah, great experience here being down to start the fourth quarter. You know, it's somebody better find Malachi Branham because he can score. He can. You need your whole roster well. to be ready to play during the season. You know, to win games in December, January, February when, you know, you get the, the season can get a little slow. You need guys to come alive and win games. So I think he's a great experience for us. It's valuable for him. 
Just taking care of the ball, making sure that's your mentality, and then execution. 1,000%. You know Brandon Pajemski is going to get a few rebounds here at some point. I've been really impressed by him, um, not only, you know, through preseason, but even when I was here and got the chance to, like, uh, play pickup with these guys. Incredible guy. I mean, great guy, very talented. Speaking Chris of defense. Uh, Alcatraz. GP2. <laughs> <laughs> That's for Quinones. Magruder. Oh, they put him in a bad spot. And the Warriors turn it over. They got to value the ball. Got to take care of it. You're going to walk them all the way down. You need every possession. They're going to pick up here. A little pressure, full court pressure. It's a way of life for GP2, mm -hmm. as you were saying. You can't throw any kind of lazy passes around him. And he's so strong. Like, his hands and his, like, just everything about him is so strong. Like Wesley. He tore his MCL, but pretty good quickness his one year at Notre Dame. Trace did a great thing there just to help him recover, make it look clogged up inside, and then fire back out, just sell out for that jumper. He did it. Great contest. Yonez made the G League all rookie team. Set that up. GP2 likes the corner. Trey Jackson Davis on the glass. And hit high notes isn't the only thing that Trey <laughs> Jackson Davis can do. Oh, the way he guarded Sabonis for a rookie. The other night. That was impressive. Fantastic. Held his own. You can't ask for much more. Good cut. So, yeah, Jenny Osmond can play. Yeah, you got to see man and ball on the defensive side off the ball. I know you know how important that is, GTA, just with all these teams and all the cutting that happens. Guys are going to take advantage if you don't see man and ball. It's hard, though, man. The game's happening so oh, that's nice. Oh, oh. Jonas left it on the iron. And beautiful move there by Lester. Osmond and McDermott playing a little catch. And that's where McDermott normally will stripe that three. Now, you think about Doug McDermott. He comes in 41% on threes, 81% from the line. There's only eight active players that have those numbers. I mean, that, that's some tall. There's 450 guys in the league. The elite company right there. One of eight guys. One of eight guys. Nice. That's something to brag about. 41% on threes and 81% from the line. And he can shoot off the boot, too, off the of screens. But Jemski somehow found Magruder. I actually got the chance to play against Doug Magruder uh, in college when Creighton first came over to the Big East. And Doug, I mean, Doug McDermott, McDermott yeah. really tore us apart. I mean, we played at New Year's Eve. Nice move, young fella. We played them New Year's Eve to open Big East play, and he tore us apart. How solid is Trace Jackson Davis' footwork around the rim? You know when you hear that phrase, a guy knows who he is? Trace Jackson Davis knows he is a kind of a traditional big man. He's not out shooting threes. He's not out shooting wing jumpers. He's scoring and rebounding inside. And blocking shots. His help and recover is serious. He's done that a few times now. Chris Jackson, look at him clapping it up, too. Yeah, Steve Kerr's happy. happy. 24 second violation nice. because the Warriors play the D. To have a big that can move like that, look, that's why Draymond's laughing. He's like, okay, I'm teaching my young guy right. That helped him recover. He made the driver pass it, pass it to who he wanted him to pass it to, and then got out there and blocked the shot. It's like, Wendy, you're not the only one that can do that. Jemski, little floater on back iron. Spurs have built an 18 point lead. And the Warriors had cut it to seven. San Antonio kind of emptying the bench a little bit here, which means everybody's getting an opportunity. Sissoko is in the game, and Champagne as well. Mamu, say it, Kalena for me. <laughs> Come on, Mamu, he is feeling. There you go. That's tough right there. Yeah. Mamu Kellish. I got Bede. I got a tough name, so I gotta I got practice with mine and I gotta work on others. I'm not even gonna try to say that. <laughs> and we call him Mamu. Yeah. But okay. Sandro Mamu Kellishvili speaks English, Russian, Italian, and Georgian. And the wow. Saza Pachulia is from Georgia as well. That's impressive. So 828 remaining in the ball game. There he is. Mamu Kellishvili. And the Spurs with a nine-point lead. <laughs> All right, normally our Buick drive of the game, a guy's getting to the rim. Except against Wembenyama, it's hard to do. So that Jonathan Kaminga 
spin, fade, and high arcing shot. Our Buick drive of the game. JK had a big smile. We were laughing. Kaminga's 21. Wimanyama is 19. And that's the future of the league, looking at guys like that. That was by far the most impressive thing Kaminga did tonight, because he was blocking everybody else's shot. Found a way to get it up and over him. Not easy to do. Seven threes from a 7-5 guy. I love that. <laughs> He's getting them up. He is. It's a different game now. Steph now. Curry effect. Yep. Changed it all up. So Dominic Parlow was undrafted. He played with the two Thompsons that were drafted in the first round this year. From the OTE League. That new league. Amen. The Ruder with a runner. You know what the crowd's thinking. Hey, down 18, the Sacramento Warriors came all the way back. Down 18 tonight, they're within eight. They're used to comebacks. This is C.D. Sissoko. He's super athletic. He's got some shot-making ability. Blake Wesley can drive. And he's got some speed. He does. And you just see Trace Jackson Davis not reach in. He, he's getting a lot of clap from the coaching staff. Everything he does defensively and offense. Set a good screen for Pajemski and he rewards him. There's a little rookie handoff for the dunk. Let him eat. That's the game gods right there. Basketball gods bless him. Play good defense, finish on the other end. Pajemski knows what to do with it too. He does. Oh, that's a nice cut. Mamu Kelishvili right to the lane to lay it up and in. <laughs> Bajemski, to me, the assist to turnover ratio is Lester Quinones floats at home. Six to one assist to turnover ratio for a rookie in his first preseason? That's Makes, crazy. That's unheard of. That is crazy. That'll make your coach happy. Right. And then Coletta loves the six rebounds from a guard. Yeah. That's going to carry over. Now he could do it at Santa Clara. Blake Wesley missing that three. And Moody with the rebound. They've come from 18 down to within six. They're not going to see the starters put back in in this game. That's a bug. Moody. That's JTA a bug. doing play before play. I know it. I know that. I know that. I know a little bit about that guy. I love the way he's been playing. Uh, I tell you, Moody and Kaminga, their, their preseason has just been wonderful. There's a good no call there. Barlow and Pajemski got tangled up. Shot clock at seven. Look at Brandon uh, there, and that will be a foul. Their intensity is sky high right now. Pajemski did a little too much there. A little overzealous there. Well, you like that intensity defensively. I love it. The pick and roll with Trace Jackson Davis is working. They've got some great things out of it, including the kick. Everybody was so worried about the, the pick and roll game. Trace Jackson Davis at the basket. Moody's defender was sagging off of him. So Moses Moody, he was 8 of 16 on threes coming in in the preseason. He's 1 for 3 tonight. I think Kaminga are north of 40 on threes for the year. And JT, I was going to ask you about .5 basketball and making quick decisions because that's what Moody does so well to me. There's no hesitation. He's making quick decisions as he gets a stop right. as we're talking about him. Was that something that came naturally to you? And that, does that just make the game more fun, making quick decisions like that? For sure. I mean, the ball is just zipping around. Everybody's touching the ball. Um, and that's part of, you know, watching film, understanding the game. I mean, yes, the game, every play is different. The, every game is different. But basketball has very similar patterns. So when you understand the game and you know how things are unfolding, you know, in real time, then, you know, when you're playing point five basketball, you're just that much more dynamic and hard to guard. That ball was behind the backboard, and that, by definition, is out of bounds. And hey. so the Warriors will take over on the sideline. Hey, they want this win. You can tell. They want to keep their preseason unbeaten streak alive and then just go into the regular season with wins. You're talking about the, the 2.5 or .5. It's, it's, you know, pass, cut, shoot. Pass, right. cut, shoot. Like, don't hold the ball. Jamski missing that three. When you hold the ball, you allow the uh, defense to recover. And then everything that you work for, all the advantages that you're trying to win, you've basically done them for nothing. So you want to keep the ball moving. Yeah. Be quick, but don't hurry. Right. I like that. Be quick, but don't hurry. That's right. John Wooden. I'm going to teach my son that every day. So <laughs> be quick. Mamu Kellishvili reigning in the three. And giving San Antonio a bit more separation up six. So with this, 
deeper reserve unit. Where does the offense come from? Corey Joseph is in to be a secondary ball handler. Setting up Rodney Magruder for three. And the rebound right to Pajemski. But it's Trace Jackson Davis keeping it alive. And they're getting penetration, which is great. The defense has to react to that. That's how they're getting open looks. And then provides opportunities for offensive rebounds, too. So go. Oop. Magruder was thinking about a steal. Mamu Kellis Billy, and sometimes you foul the guy, make him earn it at the line. Mamu can play. So a couple free throws coming, and we step aside for 15 seconds from Grayton Resort and Casino. Get ready. Golden Harvest Slot Tournaments are here. Thursdays in October. Win up to $10,000 cash with 50 winners at each tournament guaranteed. Golden Harvest Slot Tournaments only at Grayton Resort and Casino. You know, Juan, we asked Mike Dunleavy and Kalenos talked about it, the in-season tournament. What's your thought about that? They're regular season games, but they're going to lead to a single elimination tournament. The finals will be in Vegas and the first week in December. As a player, what do you think? Uh, I love it. I mean, I think it brings uh, another competitive uh, aspect to the season. You know, when you get into December, January, February, the, the season can get a little long. And so you want to do things to like just switch it up and you know bring a little bit more excitement. I, I think it is all dependent upon how the stars really you know approach it as well because I think that'll have a ripple effect across the league. And so um, especially you know the money prize, I think that's a, a sure. great bonus as well. And you know guys who are on minimum, you get that extra check. That's 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 pretty steep, you know. So I, I like it. It's another opportunity to be competitive. Ooh, nice oh, block. Jackson Davis. Met Mamu Kellishvili at the top and sent him away. And he's not having that. Nothing easy at the rim. Knocked away from Moody, so the Warriors have turned it over back to back times. So the young Spurs trying to maintain that lead, and that's going to be a blocking foul and the basket. I agree with that. He was moving. It's so hard to get people square like that in the open court and really take that charge. All right, JTA, this would be you here at the rim. Are you ready? But watch him. Spin mm. off of that. He, mm. was, he was being walled that. off. Yeah. He was being walled off and he, he didn't let it happen. This is the hand one. Yeah, Moody wasn't quite there. It was correctly called a block. And that was defensively. And Trace Jackson Davis is showing he could be a rim protector. Pajemski got a technical foul and are arguing on the behalf of Moses Moody. Brandon will know rookies don't get tees. I mean, part of me loves that, just the intensity to even get a tee right now. It shows how bad they want it. And he's got oh, his well. teammates back. Exactly. Can't exactly. Be that. exactly. What about TJ uh, Trace? TJD. That's what guys call him, right? Okay. I mean, well, he's, well, that's funny because we were asking Chris Paul last night. And because Steph Curry said, here he is, the man with many names, because they're calling him <laughs> Trace. They're calling him Sweet T. They're calling him TJD. Like, nobody can figure out where they're going to go okay. with Trace Jackson Davis. Something's got to lock in, though. Yeah. Hopefully sooner than later. But I really like this kid. I mean, it, he doesn't do anything that just goes, wow. But he does his job. You know, block shots, rebound, finish above the rim, screen and roll. Like, well, did you ever see him in Indiana? He averaged 20 and 10, and he played over 100 college games. Like, to me, I, I, I'm sorry. When I watch don't, the draft, and I, it, don't don't get and him started on his four-year guys. He's gonna, I, I he's was going to say, I love the four-year guys. Yes. I'm a four-year guy. I when love I, it. When I watch the draft and I see someone like Trace Jackson Davis, and they're getting into the 40s and the 50s, he hasn't been picked. I'm kind of wondering, who's doing all the scouting? <laughs> okay, you know, oh, I don't like guys in college like oh wait Tim Duncan was a four-year player you know he seemed to work out okay right. you know, Steph but, Curry what, was he three I three think, okay you know Michael Jordan went three if Michael Jordan can go three come on so yeah. I mean you young if you're ready at 18 19 go to the NBA but I love the four-year guys you get that experience in college and there's nothing like playing an NCAA tournament I was lucky enough to play in the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight there's nothing like the NCAA tournament but you also grow up as a person for sure the league is hard you know, I, when I see guys like Kaminga come in as a teenager, th this is a hard league. It is. And so the one thing about college, yes, if you have the ability to do it, of course, and financially it, it makes sense, but I, I don't mind some of the guys that have spent some time in college. Yeah, rarely do guys come to the league with that kind of experience. You see it all over his game. He does right. everything so easily. 
Mr. Quinones. See, Pojemski, that's what he does. He scraps for the ball. Champagny did a good job kind of walling him off. Champagny off front iron, long rebound. This is the one thing with the league now with so many threes. Long shots yield long rebounds. So that's why wings and hustlers can be good rebounders. Yeah, and that's why point guards can be good rebounders as well. All they got to do is just get in the mix. Moody, another three. That was a big one. I got a nickname for Moses that I personally call him Triple M's. Moses Money Moody. That's my guy. Oh, that's my oh, nickname for him, Triple M's. I yeah. thought people were going with Eminem. You know? and, I, and I hope to see him get a max contract one day, hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, so that's why I call him Triple M. Watson Scott Anderson as an agent is asking for everybody <laughs> to be paid. I like to see my guys win, man. That says a lot about you. Mamu Kellishvili, that's a nice move in the lane. Might consider being an agent one day. Uh-oh. Maybe. Well, you'd be a good agent. You're just asking for the max for every single player. Give us the max. <laughs> no, no one's getting underpaid. It was Roger Scott Anderson in there. Just... Corey Joseph will get himself to the line. Hey, Corey Joseph, poised under pressure. Just having that veteran leadership out there with mm -hmm. the young guys is big. Well, you think about the point guard spot, and I, I know Steph will slide to off guard a little bit. <laughs> Steph Curry, Chris Paul, Corey Joseph, and Pajemski. Got some depth at that spot in terms of guys handling the ball. Guys you can rely on. All four of those guys you can rely on. Yeah, Corey Joseph can pretty much do it all. We're gonna get a timeout here. Yeah, we're having a mandatory timeout. It's a stoppage under three minutes. So 228 remaining in the game. It's an eight-point game. JTA says Moses Money Moody. Triple limbs, baby. There is a paper goods company called 3M, and hmm. so MMM in an eight-point game and another three. Now, we've talked about the season opener against Phoenix, but the Warriors open with seven of nine on the road. We have the first in-season tournament game. That's at Oklahoma City, but Juan, what's the difference from an elite road team or a Warrior team that struggled with only 11 road wins last year. 33 home wins, but really we're not the dubs away from home. Well, you have to win road games to be good in this league. I mean, everybody knows it's easier to win at home just because of your crowd, you know, routine, the energy, et cetera, just home cooking. But when you get on the road, it's a little tough, especially when you get into, you know, six, seven game road trips and you're on the fifth game and you just played a back to back. Those are tough, you know, and that's why I mentioned earlier, you need everybody on roster to be ready to play on any given night because uh, you don't know who's going to get sick. You don't know who's going to be tired, who may be injured um, or who just may be off that night. And you may, you know, be thrown in there to give the team a spark and you got to be ready to go. And so that's where you have to find your value when you're coming off the bench. You also talked about the fact that Warriors always have a target on their backs. Mm -hmm. You go on the road, teams usually play better at home. Role players usually play better at home. They're shooting better, and, and Warriors saw a lot of that last season. Of course. I mean, everybody in the world is watching the Warriors. So you know you want to put on a show when the world is watching you. So I think guys wake up a little bit more motivated to play against the Golden State Warriors. Little runner. And out of bounds to the Dubs as Champagne unable to finish it. You bring up a great point because in the Eastern Conference, the Warriors go there one time. Mm -hmm. So you know it's the only time in Detroit or Indiana or Orlando. And so you get the come to Jesus game from those teams. Right. And the Warriors got to be ready for that. And they usually are. They've been a phenomenal road team. Sissoko with a nice steal there. Taking it right out to Jepski to lay it up and in. Tough finish in traffic. So San Antonio, every time the Warriors make that move and Moody had cut it to three, Spurs have been playing with an 18 point lead at six right now. They're showing they got some really good young players, too. Moses Booty kind of spun around in a jump ball and tied up there. He got caught up. I think Steve Kerr and Greg Popovich will love this fourth quarter in terms of we played our deeper reserves, you played yours, and it was really competitive. Right. And, then, you know, guys giving max effort at a high level. Getting good minutes, getting ready to start the season. These minutes are crucial. Playing with good intensity. Sissoko tied them up there. They're helping each other. Talking. How about the season opening night, though? Lakers and Denver. Warriors and Suns. 
Let me just give you a taste of the Western Conference right there to start the season on Tuesday. You might you might find me in Chase Center Tuesday night. No surprise if you see me there for that game. There you go. Now, would you, would you be heckling or would you be cheering? <laughs> I'm just a basketball fan. I'm here to, you know, enjoy the game. It's an art to me. You get to watch Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, KD, Brad Bill, Devin oh, Booker. Man. Oh, man. You can never take it for granted, right? Not at all. No, it's great. No, I think, Juan, you just said it perfectly. you got to appreciate that. Of course. This is stuff you're going to be telling your kids. You know, hey, by the way, Dad played with Steph. Oh. See that ring I had on my finger? Right. I earned that. But I also guarded guys like Kevin Durant. Brad Bill was kind of like, people always ask me my welcome to the oath. Bruder had it knocked away. Put oh, Jamski with an open three. Oh, battling it out. Bruder kept fighting for it. Sissoko touched it last. Go ahead. Yeah, so people always ask me about my welcome to the NBA moment. And uh, Garden Brad Bill was one of them. Uh, I remember I started that game. We played the Wizards my first year uh, in the NBA. And, you know, Steve put an emphasis, Steve and Mike Brown put an emphasis on Bradley Bill. And I, I remember I messed up on the coverage to start the game the first two times. And he hit a three and got fouled, I think. And he went on to have 40. And, you know, that was kind of my understanding of how scores work in the NBA. You don't want to let guys get going early, see the ball go in. You know, easy. They get going. I mean, these are the best guys in the world that do this. Yeah, it's easy to make a that mistake against those oh, guys, right? <laughs> you got to pay attention to the details. That's really good insight, though. That okay, we have a game plan. I missed a coverage. Bradley Beal gets going. House on fire. Look out! You can't stop him after can't stop that. Him. I mean, yeah. and the great players, they can do that. And sometimes you can't do anything about it. And people don't understand. For 48 minutes, these guys are coming downhill at you with one thing in mind: put the ball in the bucket. So you got to be on your heels and your toes. You got to be moving. Especially if, if you're Bradley Beal, on the right. Washington Wizards, and you're the guy. <laughs> you're trying to get them up. You're the threat. Yeah. If you don't play well, they're not winning the game at all. We'll see a lot of that from Jordan Poole this year, right? Absolutely. We're going to see a lot of Victor Wembenyama in his first quarter here at Chase Center and had the building buzzing. Corey Joseph getting on the deck, but committing a foul there. Just making sure no one got rolled up on there. So the Warriors actually going to do one thing that's good. You don't want to be undefeated in the preseason. <laughs> you know Is that bad luck? Yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, just get it out of the way and it just doesn't you know, mean start 0 0. I, I used to laugh in the championship years of the Spurs. Eight preseason games. You know, teams would play a lot. They had they were one and seven. They're zero and eight, two and six. Popovich was. You're not running Tim Duncan and Parker and right. into the ground. Of course, they, they they did what they needed to do with the younger players. Then they would roll out some 58 win season and things. Like the preseason <laughs> had no connectivity to to that. And I always ask people in the Warrior Championship years, what was their preseason record? Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, nobody knows. Like nobody knows. And nobody cares. I thought you were going to tell me. For no, a nobody knows. No one cares. <laughs> I'd like to think I know a lot about the Warriors. And I, I stopped at the preseason record. I just want guys to stay healthy. Like every single time we play the Spurs, I need to see weapon. I want Moody just to keep cashing in three triple limbs. That works. So Moses Moody, he's got 15 tonight. Kaminga had 13. They're going to play the foul game here. Blake Wesley will shoot a couple. You know, we spoke about the road record, and I just wanted to say this. You know, I think the pickup of Corey Joseph and Dario Sarge is really going to help this team. You know, the team was, yeah, you had your vets last year, but you had a lot of young guys, first-year guys on the team. And I'm not going to say that that's what hurt them, but I think that's – was one of the reasons that they couldn't win games on the road last year because you don't have a full team of vets who understand how to win and win in the NBA. Winning in the NBA is tough, Kalina. You know that. It. Like every game is tough. So I think these guys are going to help a lot. To that point, that's what they were saying. Like at the beginning of the season when they got to that slow start, Draymond was saying that we got a a lot of guys that need to learn how to win and. We're going through that teaching process, doing it on the fly. It's not easy to do. Final timeout. Steve is using this as a live practice with 11.8 left, down six. Spurs lead at six. Steve Kerr going to use the final 11.8 to continue coaching, running out of bounds play. This will be for a three more than likely. Also, too, to tag on your point, Juan, having Chris Paul on nights where maybe Steph doesn't play or having Steph when Chris Paul doesn't play, like the depth that they have in addition to the veteran experience, that should help on the road as well. For sure. 
Moody springs free for a three. Moses Moody is four of six from deep. They'll probably foul pretty quick just to play that game. They try to put one on Blake Wesley and they'll shoot a couple free throws, but I I'm telling you, Kaminga and Moody's three point shooting. Now you can say the games don't count and the scores don't matter and all that, but you know, Jonathan Kaminga was 10 of 22 on threes coming in. And he went one of two tonight, so he'll finish the preseason 11 of 23. But JTA, their shot selection has been really good, too. And that's one of the reasons their percentage is so high. They're not just shooting any kind of shot. Right. Shots that are created, shots they know they could make, that's key, too. And Moody will be 12 of 22 in the preseason. And if you go back to February of last year, Moses was north of 44% on threes the last three months of the season, which is why he played in the playoffs. He's made some key big shots. So Wesley, a couple free throws. They're playing the right way. They're playing within the philosophy. That's why they're getting, you know, easy shots. Everybody knows where the shots are coming from. So Sissoko so steal, and that will do it. Down 18, pretty competitive comeback, but credit the Spurs. And our first look at the 19-year-old Victor Wembenyama and his block shots and his scoring and man, the league is in good shape. There are a lot of good young players in the NBA. That man is built different. And it's just about making sure he stays healthy. Uh -huh. He's super detailed and process oriented. He's in the right place. Player development is perfect with the Spurs. He's probably going to flourish. Well, give me a final thought on your first broadcast with us. What do you think? Oh, uh, this was incredible. This was a lot of fun. I mean, you know, I know I know basketball is going to stop bouncing for me one day. So, you know, to be able to stay around the game, this this was a lot of fun. I mean, and I haven't had this much fun in a long time. You're a natural. Thank uh, you. Yeah, you're amazing at this. We had a lot of fun, too. I appreciate it. A that. lot of great things to look forward to with the Warriors, wouldn't you say? I mean, Chris Paul, the way he's going to fit in, the bench mob, who's going to come become a staple in the rotation there, the step Kaminga and Moody you're going to take. What are you looking forward to seeing the most? I'm looking forward to that, the step uh, Moody and Kaminga are going to take. You know, I was on this team when they came into the league, watched them, you know, grow and develop. I'm still watching them grow and develop. They're really good friends, brothers of mine. So uh, I'm rooting for them. I'm happy for them. I want to see them, you know, like I said, triple M's. I want to see Moses go get a max contract. I want to see JK go get a max contract, be an all-star defensive player of the year. He has all the tools in the toolbox to, to be that. I want to see him do that. So all right, we want to see you back in the league. You're going to go to Mexico. You're going to play yep. in the G League. Uh -huh. uh, you're going to get probably more sleep as a player. As a new dad, you're not going to get a lot of sleep. But yeah. uh, come back and see us anytime. But when we get to watch you, that's something Colin and I enjoy quite a bit. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to I get to go down there, play basketball. Um, Capitanes, which is the team in Mexico City, they are looking forward to, you know, putting the NBA team there. So hopefully try and put some roots down and be a part of, you know, what they're building and uh, go and embrace my culture some more. Um, continue to put paint where it ain't, as, uh, uh, you know, E-40 would say. Uh, so I'm really excited. And most importantly, I get to play basketball again, which I haven't been able to play, you know, a lot of in the past two years. So um, you'll see me back in the league. All right, Oakland's like own that. Juan Toscano Anderson joining us. Thanks for doing it, man. We really appreciate it. Thank Good you. to see you, brother. We got 82 games, Kalena. The drive for five, the quest for a fifth championship. Chris Paul's first. It starts Tuesday night. The Suns here at Chase Center. Preseason is done. The Dubs and the real stuff.